Welcome to week six, the next to last week of zero energy design. I hope you appreciated last week. You will have noticed that you have now completed all steps of the new step strategy. Reduce, reuse, produce. But now we want to make you take it to a next level. The integration of all measures into one coherent synergetic building design. Let's have a short look backwards. You saw the mini documentary about Pulse, TU Delft's first energy neutral building, followed by a discussion of the design decisions and energy technology used. You learned about solar energy technology for buildings, various options for the use of biomass were presented, and you learned about the use of environmental en energy. And now we want to start week six, when everything has to come together. So, how to get all plans combined in an integrated redesign of your building? We will only have two lessons this week, after which you will have to complete your zero energy design of the building. First, I will give you a short introduction to integrated design, which includes work by the master who coined the term already in the 1970s, Jon Christensen. Then, to help you further, Tess is going to recapitulate the three case studies that came along this week. Petalogé, Projecto Roble and Pulse. She will demonstrate how these buildings also are a show of integrated design. None of them is just an accum accumulation of techniques. Based on this information, you will have to finish your final assignment. And this assignment actually seems quite simple. Combine all measures that you have envisioned and calculated through the first five weeks to make the building energy neutral. For this, we ask you to integrate all measures proposed in the architecture of your building. You can show this by means of a scheme that depicts all measures combined, for instance, floor plans, sections, details. Drawings and sketches are welcomed, but not necessary. I will show you some examples after this slide. Finally, we want to ask you to make a calculation of the energy performance of your final redesign. Have you achieved a net zero energy building? Then you have succeeded. Here you see a climate and energy scheme of a student who also di already did a redesign of an existing building. At first it may look like chaos, but I will guide you through step by step. Here you see the original building that the student worked on. The student drew the course of the sun in this part of the world. It is the azimuth only, but the altitude of the sun should also be understood, of course. As part of step one, reduce, the student proposed a post-insulation scheme of the original facade. And he also added a double facade, a layer of glass over the existing building. Fresh air is let in through this double skin, passes through the building, floor to ceiling, and leaves the building through a solar chimney. At the top of this chimney, heat is recovered from the air. You can only do that at the top, because otherwise the thermal draft will not work. The heat extracted is then stored in an aquifer thermal energy storage underground. In wintertime, this heat will be used to heat the building. This, of course, is the PV roof, covered with solar panels to produce the electricity required. The facade also contains algae panels. These are panels with uh, transparent tubes in which wastewater is purified by algae. These algae tubes have to be put in daylight so they can be combined with facade panels. The algae can be harvested and used for proteins, nutrients or more interestingly refined to biodiesel, a renewable fuel. This is done in an algae reactor, which the student also included in his redesigned building. So you see that a good scheme of your energy and climate system has multiple layers of the narrative, and at first might not be understandable directly, but if your scheme is well organized, people can read what you are proposing. Your own scheme, of course, can differ completely from this particular one. Your building is different, your climate probably is, hence the solutions are two, while you might prefer to explain your plans in a different way. This is all allowed. Okay. So now you know what to do this week, but before we do so, we want to help you a little bit further. I want to do this by introducing my master, Jon Christensen, who taught me integrated design, a term he already invented in the 1970s as an architectural concept 
in which sustainability aspects are well integrated and not add-ons. This book, Integrated Sustainable Design, summarizes the vision, technical inventions and architectural and human, uh, urban projects of Jan Christensen. We will make it available online for you. One of the best definitions of the term sustainable was give, given by Jan. Everything future generations want to inherit, use and maintain. Sustainability is not something we do for our own benefit, we do it for the generations after us. Now, Jon has been working on sustainable building already since the 1960s and already in 1976 he designed the first energy neutral building. Sadly, it was not constructed because it would have been a global innovation. It did not refrain him from making many sustainable buildings since, including a lot of technical inventions which only became common decades later. Think of thermal insulation, passive solar houses, heat recovery on ventilated air, underground energy storage, solar collectors and heat pump systems. Too many to mention. It was only in, nine, in 2012 when he could actually build what he had imagined already in 1976. For the Floriade, the Dutch flower and greenery exhibition, Jong constructed Villa Flora, which you see here. This is an artist impression of the impressive greenhouse space. Now watch carefully. This is the same greenhouse seen from above. On the left, top, you see a strange apparatus. This is a highly efficient heat exchanger that transfers the hot air of the greenhouse above the awning in the middle to water. What happens next can be seen in the cross section of Villa Flora. Hot air that has risen against the glass roof goes to the heat exchanger and transfers its heat to water, taken to the seasonal storage in the underground. In summertime, cool water from the well is used to cool down the building, but due to irradiation and, of an, and internal heat sources, air will warm up anyway and rise to the roof. Here the story starts all over again. It almost seems so simple, you wonder why it's not used everywhere. In this image, you can also see a strange block on, of the, on the roof to the right. This is the parabolic roof, of which you see a principal section here. It has four main features. Very efficient electricity generation through sunshine concentrated by parabolic mirrors. Hot water production from a collector that cools the PV. Night cooling by radiation of warm water running through the same collector but then making use of the reverse effect of a clear night sky collection of clean condensated water on the mir steel mirrors. A brilliant solution that was, was originally designed for the 1976 building. And this is what parabolic roofs uh, looks like from the inside. The narrow window strips bring in a lot of day light, daylight since they are directly oriented to the sky. There are many more innovations applied in Villa Flora which I cannot present here today. If you are interested, please have a look at the book I showed at the beginning, Integrated Sustainable Design. For now, I think this is enough to get you started. Please continue with Tessa's lecture on the case studies you have seen throughout the weeks. See you again next week.